Hello my friends and welcome. This is Irmi from Yoga with Irmi. Today I want to show you how to make ghee or clarified butter as it's also known in Europe. And ghee or clarified butter is a staple food in Ayurveda. It's a very rich and nutritious and beneficial fat. It's made from butter. I use Kerrygold, which comes from Ireland. It's, in my opinion, the best butter you can find around here. And it's from grass-fed milk or grass-fed cows, I should say. You probably have seen pictures of Ireland, how green it is all year round. And that means the animals can be outside and graze all year round eating fresh green grass which makes the milk they produce very beneficial, nutritious and healthy for our consumption. So that's the butter I use for everyday eating and also to make my clarified butter. Now I uh, discovered or I should say rediscovered ghee or clarified butter through Ayurveda, but I actually grew up with clarified butter. So I know and I remember my grandmother making clarified butter. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So you're going to just put the butter in a stainless steel pot. And I use, I make a batch at a time. Those are three packs of eight ounces each. So that is a pound and a half. That's how I make it. And that lasts me maybe three, four weeks for one person. Uh, I don't cook for a large family anymore. And so my son, he doesn't use it that much. So I can say for one person, this amount of butter is gonna make those two containers which this is a two cup container of stoneware and that is a three quarter cup so that's going to be filled up after we do this so i just put the butter into the stainless steel pot as so and i put the heat on on medium heat you don't want to have too high heat you don't want to burn it and a very important thing to remember throughout the process is not to stir the pot. If you stir the bottom, it's burn. it will burn. It's very easy to burn. So it just needs to melt down now. It's going to take a few moments. And so uh, we're going to melt it down. And then we go to the next step. And I'm going to show you how we continue to make ghee or clarified butter. Uh, I can talk a little bit about the benefits while we are uh, waiting here. Is ghee or clarified butter is basically the best part of the cow. That's what we say in Ayurveda. Because after this process, heating the butter, and then slowly simmering it, what's happening is the protein of the butter will rise to the top and it's going to show up as a white foam. And this is going to be removed from the pot. So you will see me scooping off the white part, which is the protein. And left behind is just the pure fat of the butter. And that is... In Ayurveda, the most beneficial fat a human being can eat. Some of the benefits of clarified butter are helping digestion. So it is a lubricant on the inside of the body. It lubricates the stomach walls. It lubricates and kind of soothes the intestinal wall, even into the where the food is absorbed the small intestine and the large intestines. It also helps to uh, for the body to absorb nutrition more easily. 
So it's really beneficial for that. It also helps if you take herbs to for the body to assimilate herbs better. In, in general, it's really good for digestion. So if you suffer any kind of digestive disorders, leaky gut or indigestion, things like that, a heartburn, ghee is a really good fat to integrate into your diet, into your daily life. And the easy way to integrate it is you use it as you would use oil. For example, sauteing vegetables or meat or fish. Uh, you can put a scoop on top of your oatmeal. It's also very delicious to put a little scoop on your tea, like chai, or on your coffee. It creates a balance for the acidity of the coffee. Um, you can just substitute any oil or any fat that you use in the kitchen with ghee or clarified butter and it's a very rich and nutritious and beneficial oil to add to your diet. It's also known to um, help brain function. It's a very high quality fat so it's really good for the brain. It creates um, also a benefit for the brain and the blood so the blood going into the brain more easily bringing oxygen and nutrients into the brain it has just so many many good uh, benefits especially for pita and vata dosha people it's balancing the dryness of the water and it also balances the heat of the pita so for those two doshas, it's really, really helpful. Kapha people that have already a large, larger body and more weight, uh, they have to be a little bit more careful with fat in general. Also, if you have high cholesterol, uh, you have to be watchful because you might be uh, high kapha if, if that's the case. So definitely for water, Peter, dosha it's very helpful to calm and pacify those two uh, constitutions and maybe you can see this now the butter starts to melt uh, it starts to get even a little bit more golden and soon we're gonna see the separation of the fat and the protein. Now, as you can see, a foam starts to build. That means the protein is coming up and the ghee is bubbling. And I advise you to stay a little bit away from the pot because once in a while there's like a random bubble up and you could get splattered from it. So now that I have the heat up and the butter is bubbling, I'm going to reduce my heat a little bit from medium heat more in between medium and low because I have a pretty rapid boil now. It can be a little less, it's fine as long as it, the heat is up and it's boiling, it's fine. It doesn't need to be bubbling up out of the pan. The important part here now is now we can separate the protein off of the Butter. So what I'm starting to do now is I take a big spoon, a tablespoon. I prepared myself with a little bowl here and I like to put a plate underneath because this is pretty hot. It comes out of a boiling pot. It's basically hot fat. And carefully I kind of skim on top because you really only want to get the protein off the foam because we want to keep the golden the golden clarified butter that's what we are working here for so start scooping just slowly and carefully like I said stay a little bit away from the pot and I like just to skim around the edges just kind of draw the protein to the corner to the edge of the pot and then I take my spoon and gently 
and slowly skim it and you can see it's really just the protein part I don't want to scoop off the precious fat so now just that takes a little while I would say the whole process takes at least a half an hour maybe longer you have so you have to tend to it and stay with it and be patient and love the whole thing it's such a precious fat that you are making here so it's really worth it I mean you can go in the store in the health food store some supermarkets even carry ghee now and buy it but it's pretty pricey and I figured it out one time to make it at home even using Kerrygold which is the most expensive butter I know <laughs> to buy here even though you know using expensive butter it's still only half the price of if you buy the ghee in the supermarket or in the health food store and the other thing I like to make it I remember my childhood with it I remember my grandma making it my mom making it but more my grandma it was her job somehow she liked doing it she made the clarified butter and in Germany still you actually can go in a supermarket and buy clarified butter and it's dirt cheap it's not a special thing it's something that's still part of the population there part of the diet and I'm sure some people still make it themselves also so scooping scooping here till everything is separated and at one point we will know when it's finished I'm gonna show you so now I pretty much skimmed a pretty good amount so now I'm gonna you know stop for a minute and let more protein come up so I don't want to scoop too much of the oil out so my family when I was a kid they used to use it mostly for baking or and deep frying my grandmother used to make a lot of deep fried baked goods so there were sweet stuff sweet things that they made and they were what we call deep fried and they used the clarified butter for that so everything I remember the taste everything had this just buttery flavor it's a little nutty flavor buttery nutty flavor it's just a very soothing flavor already they also used it in the pan like starting a roast I remember my mom putting a piece of clarified butter on the bottom and melting it and then putting the roast in the pan and then in the oven so it was used as like you would use any fat I didn't know how precious it actually was I didn't know how beneficial it health wise actually was until I rediscovered it now with Ayurveda and it's an ancient tradition actually it comes out of Ayurveda from India but it's also a staple in Europe from the culture and um, I heard a friend talk about that it's actually also mentioned in the Bible someplace to use as a fat and you know back in the ancient times of course people did a lot of things for the purpose of conservation or preservation so they used their butter and clarified it so the clarified butter doesn't need to ref be refrigerated so it makes it makes butter last butter itself doesn't last for a long time it would it goes bad eventually but clarified butter you don't need to put it in the refrigerator never in India they keep it in clay pots and they actually hand it down from generation to generation as a wedding gift for the next generation and as long as more seasoned it is as older it is and as long it has been stored properly it becomes more and more medicinal actually then it becomes a medicine and it can be used for burns on the skin skin problems rashes which is a high heat sign which means high pita 
And as I mentioned earlier, clarified butter is good for the pita dosha. So it used is used uh, medicinal outside and inside because of the ability to heal the gut. I actually read that uh, clarified butter prevents colon cancer because it's lubricating the intestine and the colon so the digestion is moving properly, especially if you have uh, constipation problems. That means your colon is too dry. You need to add moisture, which of course is also drinking enough, but the water is not enough. There needs to be a balance for the dryness with good oils, with good fat. And now I'm gonna scoop a little bit again. Scoop it to the side and then pull it out. And it takes time, but I like doing it. I like doing stuff like that. <laughs> and like I said, it reminds me of my grandma really. So I'm happy and proud to continue this tradition that I didn't even know I had. <laughs> so, hello grandma. Hello Oma. I hope you watch me and bless me so I do it right. <laughs> but I know, I, I know how to do it by now. So still bubbling, simmering basically. You want to simmer, not to wrap it. It's not necessary. And you don't want to be below simmer because then the process is not happening of separation. And again, I wait a little bit, let some more protein come up. Never stirring the pot, never, never. You don't need to stir for any reason. And if you would, then you have a good chance of burning the bottom because some of the protein will also settle on the bottom. We, we will see that at the end then. So just leave it, let it do. <coughs> Excuse me. Let it do its thing. And it's coming along nicely. Wait a little bit, <laughs> patiently creating ghee. After you have some experience making it, you could walk away for a little bit like you know, I know now that this is going to take a little while longer. I would, you know, go and do something else maybe for 10 minutes or so, come back check it i mean nothing is going to happen it's not going to burn as long as you don't stir the pot now i don't know come back there's another method that i saw people do uh, you can also just keep boiling it or simmering it for maybe half an hour or so and then pour it through a strainer or a cheesecloth that's another way to separate then the protein out, out of the fat. This is just my method because I like it, as I said. That's how I know it. But you could just let this simmer now the whole time and wait till everything is separated. Like I do it in steps. I scoop and then I wait and then I scoop. You could just let this boil now for probably 20 or 30 minutes till everything is up, the whole part, the whole uh, amount of protein is floating up and then you just pour it through a cheesecloth or a strainer. That takes a little experience uh, in my opinion because you have to know how long it takes. Now if you, if you pour it too early then you might you know lose some of the the fat because if not everything is separated then you you pour out the good stuff too so in the beginning i think it's actually good to do it that way because you're gonna learn the process you're gonna see how long it takes for everything to be separated time wise 
and just see the process and when you have more experience then you can use the strainer or the cheese cloth maybe you can hear the sound the sizzling simmering sound here sounds like fat is simmering and again i'm gonna scoop a little bit and i can see i hope you can see too how the protein actually starts to come up so it's within the fat and the protein starts to really separate and just scoop it away a little bit and they're gonna wait it's getting a lot lighter and as you can see the protein foam is getting a little bit less so we have already quite a bit of protein out here it smells amazing it smells buttery so you get the butter feel the butter smell but at the same time it has a little nuttiness to it it's a very high heatable fat it can be heated to 450 degrees before it starts smoking so the smoke point is 450 degrees it's very high heat heatable and i had that experience myself i would put the pan on with some ghee in it and i walk away you know getting something and i forget a little bit about it i come back and the pan is totally hot the fat is totally melted but it's not burning i actually never managed to burn ghee and i do burn stuff <laughs> sometimes so it's very durable in that sense also okay let's scoop a little bit more beautiful color is appearing this golden color it's also called the golden liquid it's like drinking or eating gold that's how precious it is in the diet So basically you can just replace whatever fat you use to cook with, replace it with ghee. Starts to get quite hot. And again be careful, always take a little distance. Sometimes it just bubbles up and you can get burned. getting there looking very nice as you can see the foam is getting less and less So good. I put it on my oatmeal every morning, a teaspoon on top. Sometimes I put it in my tea, I forget it sometimes. But I use it for cooking, of course, for sauteing. Make everything with ghee now. I used to use olive oil for everything, which is also a very good fat. And you always have to look for good quality always go for organic or at least non-gmo pesticide free always get close as possible to the original product to the natural product 
Sometimes we can't get the perfect stuff, sometimes you can't get it even organic, or sometimes it's very expensive. I make compromises and then I just get the next best thing, which is non-GMO, or free-range, or grass-fed. I mean, this butter is not labeled as organic, but, you know, <laughs> the cows are outside, the grass is pretty just growing there probably so I trust that it's pretty natural and pretty clean and I can tell on you know using it and eating it it's so much different than commercially produced butter that we can buy in the store it's a lot softer that shows that it has a higher fat content there is no water in it. I made clarified butter one time with normal butter that I just bought at Walmart, just the normal brand there. And it was totally different. There was so much water in there, which was bubbling up. There was water and then I got less, way less out of it from the same amount of butter. I only got this amount out of it. I didn't get this. <laughs> That's a lot of difference. So that means there was so much water in it and who knows what else. It, the quality was very, very different. So I tried it one time because I wanted to know if there is a difference. And yes, there is a very big difference. So I know just by experience now that the Kerrygold butter is the real deal. So always go for the best quality you can get with any food, with any oil, with any fat, with meat, especially dairy and meat. You don't want to eat the commercial food that we usually get. Not only is the quality bad from bad feet that the animals get or the plants, but it's just unethical. They just suffer and torture the animals all those hormones all those stress hormones that those animal goes through you know going through the slaughtering process that's all in the meat so all that panic all that stress all that fear is in the meat the hormones are in the meat and you're gonna eat it and it's gonna influence you so that's a big point and then of course nobody not even an animal does have to suffer so much just so we can eat a piece of meat it's just not normal it's not natural it's not balanced and i would advise you always go to the best quality the least harmfully pro pro produced food so you can see now this is getting a lot thinner here the white foam and we are getting there it's getting close to being ready i can see the bottom of the pot now so i can see through that means the protein is pretty much out of it there's a little bit left on the top so i'm gonna stay for a little bit longer but we are getting there it's so beautiful I love making it. I love ancient stuff. <laughs> that's why I like yoga. That's why I like Ayurveda. That's why I like making clarified butter. I just like ancient things that are still around because in my opinion, that means they work. Otherwise they wouldn't be around anymore. So now it starts to get a little bit lesser and lesser so soon now i'm gonna stop here even though there's still some foam on the top um, the foam starts to get a little bit discolored it starts to get a little brown that means it starts to burn maybe not really burn but just it doesn't smell burning at all but it just gets a little bit um, 
to the end now. I don't know how to explain this, but it's just something that I noticed. When the foam starts to have a different color, in the beginning it's totally yellow. And now it's getting more grayish. It starts to burn a little. And what happens, you can still pour this off and then in the end you can you can scoop the rest off the top here and you're gonna see that so I'm gonna turn the heat off now I think we are pretty much there just and if you I'm gonna show you the really beautiful golden color just scooping this off the rest of it really good okay now I'm gonna just take the pot <laughs> I want to say that and then I keep on scooping <laughs> okay let's stop, stop now I'm gonna show you I turned the heat off already I'm just gonna take this um, let me put something underneath because it's really hot and I don't want to burn my counter so it's good to put something underneath because it's really hot and I'm just gonna stay away I'm just gonna pour it into my maybe you can see the golden color oh so beautiful so those are two cups here and this is a three-quarter cup and you can fit a little bit more in here and the bottom of the pot looks a little burned and the protein did burn down there a little bit but it did not affect the ghee or the clarified butter it doesn't burn so just so you know when that happens in the end it's normal it's nothing wrong with it now i'm gonna put it in the sink all by itself and carefully put some water in it step away from it and just let it soak and then you can clean the pot out so now we have a little bit of uh, foam left here and in the end you can just go up on top here again and scoop the rest off <laughs> So beautiful it's totally clear I can see the bottom of the pot here and I mean if you have a little bit of the foam it's not toxic or anything it's not terrible but this is now not really has any use anymore the protein you can't really do anything with it I remember my grandparents my parents what they did with this right after making the clarified butter they would use it on a piece of bread and just make use it as butter but only right after it was made when it was still warm and I tried it myself I kept it for a day and then the next day I tried to use it somehow you know like butter on a bread but it doesn't taste good it tastes sour like sour milk it's just not usable anymore and I remember that just throwing it out <coughs> So, clarified butter. I hope you can see it. It's very hot. So once you have it in the pot in a stoneware dish, leave it where it is so it can cool down to at least room temperature. You don't have to refrigerate clarified butter, as I said earlier. What I like to do when it's cool down, which is gonna take hours, I put it in the refrigerator so it really solidifies so it gets really hard and then I take the pot out and put it on my counter and then I use it every day and then it's just gonna stay more solidified especially now in the summertime and um, it's gonna get 
a little bit softer but still pretty solid that's how i like to do it if you feel like you need to refrigerate it you can do it of course but it's not necessary okay clarified butter or ghee i hope you enjoyed the process i hope you try it uh, especially what the pita people if you are kapha dominant you have to be careful with fat anyway so i would use it a little bit more scarcely but if you pita or water it's definitely gonna cool and calm the system besides all the other benefits that i mentioned earlier thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you give it a try and i see you next time namaste